Welcome to today's masterclass. My name is Jose Rivera, the CEO of CSA, and I'll be your host today. For those of you who are unfamiliar with CSA, we are a global nonprofit trade association with over 500 members in 35 countries. We have been around since 1994. To highlight a few of CSA's many member benefits, the CSA Best Practices Manual guides control system integration companies in the setup and running of a solid company. These best practices reflect the knowledge gained by system integrators over the years and shared freely. Any system integrator will benefit from deploying the best practices, but gaining the CSA certification is a confirmation by a third party that you have deployed them correctly. Maintaining a valid certification ensures that your company stays on a path of continuous improvement. For partner members, CSA offers an ecosystem to grow their system integration programs, understand their customer pain points, monitor industry trends, and share their thought leadership. A trusted resource of qualified integrators and suppliers, the CSA Industrial Automation Exchange help system integrators, industry suppliers, and manufacturers and process companies connect and do business. That makes the exchange a first stop where end users can compare integrators, determine which products to use, and have questions answered by specialists in the field. For system integrators and partners, it provides a platform to increase your digital presence, support your content and search engine optimization marketing efforts, position your company and C-suites as thought leaders, showcase your expertise and nurture prospects by providing a trusted, credible source for information about your company and its products. In 2021, we will have increased access to knowledge sharing, community building and networking through the year when you join and renew your CSA membership. CSA is committed to delivering extremely relevant content to system integrators while providing partner members access to a highly engaged audience. To that end, CSA will deliver weekly virtual events on a broad range of topics and experiences, all of which are open to sponsorship. One big reminder, CSA conducts annual awards so now is your opportunity to nominate your colleague, your um, employee for the different categories that we have. Just remember that the deadline is February 26. Sign up for our upcoming events. We have more masterclass, but we also have this um, member mingle, which is a funny event to try to get us to interact and, and have some fun. You're encouraged to use the chat box to share your reactions, provide your input, but please write down questions in the Q&A box as we go along. They will be answered at the end. And without any further ado, I would like to introduce Yuri Chamarelli, Lead Product Marketing Specialist, and Zachary Stang, Automation Leader, both from Phoenix Contact, a uh, solid uh, CSA vendor partner for many years. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you very much, Jose. Pleasure to be here. So uh, as Jose said, my name is Zachary Stank. I am the product manager for Control Safety IO uh, at Phoenix Contact. And in a minute, uh, Yuri will bring up a presentation on the screen with our contact information as well. So during this presentation, I'll be giving a short introduction uh, about PLC Next and what it means. And then Yuri will be uh, presenting the majority of the topic, uh, going a little bit deeper into how PLC Next technology is open and what it means uh, for your company. Um, as you can see, our, our information is on the screen now. So if any time uh, after this event, you have any questions about PLC Next or the technology, please don't hesitate to reach out to Yuri or myself and we will discuss uh, those topics with you and we can answer any questions you may have. Um, so PLC Next technology, you know, it, it's probably something you've heard of recently. Uh, I'm hoping you've heard of it recently. We've been pushing it a lot since uh, 2019. And 
the question is, what is PLC Next technology? And it's hard to describe it in a single paragraph, but we've we've done our best here. Uh, PLC Next technology is more than just a controller. So when uh, we launch a product in any in any form, a lot of times people see the hardware and they say, okay, that's the hardware. That's what what we're using now. So yes, this is a new control platform. However, it is more than just a control platform. It's an entire ecosystem that exists now for control of the future. Uh, and when we say control of the future, we're really talking about new new types of automation, including IIoT, uh, Linux, uh, high-level language, uh, things that we never thought were possible on a 61131 type of control. Um, and, and in this format now, PLC Next offers the opportunity to do things that were never before possible in an IEC 61131 controller. So uh, in, additional to, in addition to that standard PLC Next runtime, it's open Linux out of the box. Uh, so you can work on it as a Linux super user right out of the box with no, no downloading, no, no installing of a, a Linux kernel. Um, it's IIoT ready, uh, meaning that you can connect out to a cloud, uh, AWS, Azure, Google IoT, whatever your cloud platform is, you can connect up to it. And again, that's out of the box connectivity. And then it's revolutionary because um, you're allowed to do high level language on it. So it's not just a traditional IEC 61131, you know, rung logic or ladder logic or, you know, structured text type of language. You can do uh, C++, C sharp out of the box on this and, and develop it with new types of engineers for the future. So the, the big thing here that I want you to remember about PLC Next technology is that the platform is open. And by open, we mean three things. It's Linux, it's IIoT ready, and it's revolutionary. And now uh, Yuri Camarelli will be taking over to, to go deeper into some of these topics. Uh, Yuri, take it away. Thank you very much, Zach. Uh, thanks, CSIA, Jose, and team for inviting us over today. We, we, we're very pleased and uh, we feel great about giving this webinar. Uh, and I think I'm gonna take it away from here and explain to you guys a little more in depth what we mean by open. Uh, Zach has given you guys a very good introduction. So this PLC is unlike anything else that we've seen in the market uh, over the last 25 years. And we like to start by making a statement on that openness, right? So why is it open and it's just because it is Linux, it's just because it is IIoT ready, revolutionary. Uh, no, that is more to that. So I just like to go a little more in depth over here and walk you guys through what it is and why we did the way we did it. So first of all, uh, let's talk about the Linux and what is it? Uh, oops, I'm sorry, my slides going faster than me. Uh, so as we all know, we are into the era of IIoT, all things connected all the time, right? So which means devices need to be IIoT ready. They need to have the provisions to connect to cloud services, to connect to external databases, whether we're talking about fog or cloud, okay? And that's where the Linux kind of comes into play. Uh, if we think about all the cloud services out there, Amazon, Google IoT, Microsoft Azure, they work with Linux as well. Therefore, they provide just about anybody who is willing to use it and contract their services, they provide uh, development kits, which are basically a bunch of like Linux, uh, JavaScript or Python code, which can be deployed in your Edge device, right? And very easily connect the Edge device to the cloud. Uh, and we are just not an Edge device. We are also a IO station. We can do control because we are a PLC. PLC Next is a PLC with a PLC runtime. 
reliable, rugged, and we have all the I.O. capability, which we take to the cloud by the same means Amazon and all the other cloud services do. So we can go in between the two industries very easily. Uh, so, and, and that's the reason why you may want to think about a new control platform, okay? So, and where is Phoenix Contact? coming from when we decided to develop this platform. Okay, so let me show you guys a little bit. So why is that a need? Why is that a need for automation solutions, but in a new way? Why are we doing this? Okay, what's changing? I just said, right, is digitalization. It's IoT, cloud, okay? So let's just look at that picture. In 05, the, the Pope passed, and that was how the crowd looked like back on that day, right? So they watched, they grieved. A few years after that, in 13, that landscape changed quite a bit. When the Pope resigned, everybody had a mobile device and they were streaming or recording, okay? That's how fast technology is developing and evolving around us. So if we look to the landscape, which is the landscape we are part of, okay? Industrial automation. We have three revolutions that already happened. 1.0 through 3.0. And we're still living on that reality of 69, but we're going through this new industry 4.0 evolution and everything is being connected to the internet. Everything talks to everything. That's what the industry 4.0 means, right? Let me, let me show you guys a little graphic. Some of you may know what the Purdue model is, so Purdue model, it's a, a pyramid of systems. And that model was created by the Purdue University out of Indiana. And that's how we architect automation systems today. We have on the very bottom, we have the assets, IO, sensors, things we, we monitor, things we collect, basically the physical uh, things we are connected to. Okay, those sensors connect to PLCs or DCSs, IO stations, okay? And finally, that data gets processed and it becomes visual, going to SCADA systems, HMIs, if it's a local station. And that SCADA system sometimes keeps going. It talks to a management, uh, production man man management system, which is the MES, and it can keep going and talks to your ERP and SAP, a Oracle. So the, 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 the board of the company, right? The, the, the executives, they can see how much money is being spent. Finally, some companies have gotten to the cloud. Uh, not all companies are there, but most companies are getting there. And that's basically the end of the system where some of that data gets sent to the cloud, okay? Uh, is that IoT? Not really, that's more like IT only because uh, you just have that Oracle SAP system connecting to a cloud server and saving that data elsewhere in case something goes bad at the plant, okay? So finally, what's going on right now? We, we call this, transformation, right? And some specialists within the industry are calling that the flattening of the Purdue model. So all those systems, they are no longer connected as a pyramid, but they are spread flat and they all talk to each other and they talk to the cloud. So I have a PLC, 
okay, on the edge, sending data straight up to the cloud. And if my MES or ERP needs that data, it can go to the cloud and ask for that data as opposed to go to the field. That is cheaper, faster, safer, and more deployable. Uh, same for EHMIs, PLCs. We have even sensors, right? Sensor to cloud. Companies are selling that. IOLink, it's one of those technologies behind sensor to cloud connections. So this is what happening. So we we force we we foresaw that uh, a few years ago. We we understood that the, the the industry was going there, and we start developing PLC Next, right? Those little squares and bubbles all around the 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 screen right now they have a meaning, which are all those systems connecting and. When we developed the system, we had to think about both worlds, the traditional PLC, which you, most of you are familiar with, and the IT, OT, IIoT world. How do we make that come together, right? And that's how we did it. Very simply, I'm going to explain to you guys in a very, very simple way. We had hardware. We knew how to make I.O. and we know how to make I.O. really, really well. So we had this really rugged system called the Axial Line, okay? And we already had PLCs and we knew how to do PLCs. So we kept that good stuff and we put this on top. We put Linux on top of that. So from Windows CE, we migrated to Linux. And now we have a little CPU as rugged, as reliable as the PLCs that we always had with Linux operating system in it, okay? But that does not address industrial automation and PLC programming. So what did we do? We created something called PLC PLC Next technology, which is a technology. It is a bundle of applications running inside a real time runtime. And that runs in Linux. And we use something called RT patch, which allows the Linux operating system to become real time and give that application priority, which means that is the most important thing, the CPU, the PLC is running. So it is the same concept as the traditional PLC running in Windows. To be honest, is less prone to crashing than any Windows PLC that you guys may find in the market because Linux is more stable. So that being said, I'm explaining to you guys that this is a PLC, okay? As you see on the screen right now, that's a PLC, industrial PLC. So how do we program it? Well, we do the traditional IC6121, letter logic, structure text, functional chart, all that stuff, we still do it. Right, but that is where the revolutionary comes, right? And we can do C, right? Very traditional programming language, uh, very widespread and used over the industry. We can support that now, but we can support more. We can support HTML5. So, what if you're building screens as you're doing your programming? How awesome is that? Like how much time you save it? So we also support that. Finally, we are Linux based, which means we can leave that Linux slice open, okay? So as you run your PLC runtime, 
okay? That does not stop you from installing applications on the Linux operating system, all right? Will those applications have a priority over the PLC runtime? Never. But we have enough horsepower in this CPUs that we can maintain the priority and still run other applications. And you can do things like JavaScript, Python, right? Uh, and finally, because of those languages and that openness in the Linux operating system, we can do cloud systems as well. Proof Cloud, which is a cloud by Phoenix Contact, but you also can do AWS, Google, Microsoft, Azure, right? But that's not all, that is more. Finally, if you're coming from a AB Rockwell uh, world, we support all the legacy protocol stuff in the Axelon system. We can do Ethernet IP, Profinet, Modbus, Modbus RTU, so many protocols. I can be here for 10 minutes talking about protocols. So we have all that supported within the platform too. So finally, we're going back to that. It's Linux, it's IIoT ready, and it is revolutionary because of all those things that I just told you. But what does that mean? What is PLC Next technology for you as a user, right? So when you use a PLC Next technology, you got to be thinking of an ecosystem, not just a controller or not just a software. It's a whole community of people working together. So we have controllers, which are Linux-based, reliable, rugged, with I.O. embedded. We have a software called PLC Next Engineer, and that's where you do your ladder logic, you do your EHMI screens, uh, you do uh, C++, C Sharp, Python, things like that. Uh, and you also have the PLC Next Store, which is a location website like App Store, where we have apps, libraries, pre-made applications, examples, things that will help you to develop your solution. Finally, the PLC Next community is where you go for questions. So if you don't know how to do something, or if you don't even know if PLC Next can do that, you can just ask. We have people of that 24 seven answering questions. Okay, and they are specialists like myself. They know their topics and they will research and they will get back to you with your answer. All right. And finally, Proof Cloud. Proof Cloud is a really easy cloud, ready to go system. Uh, it's as easy as checking a box on the, on the platform. So you're doing a program and you train your variables, you train your function blocks, and you want one of those variables to go to the cloud. You just check a box that variable pops on the cloud on the website and you can see in real time from anywhere in the world, okay? Finally, uh, you know, I was talking about protocols and all that. We try to make this platform as future-proof as possible. So we are gonna keep those protocols going, right? We have things like CanOpen, Profibus, Profinet, Modbus, IOLink, IOLink is so, nice and so hot right now. We have so many IOLink products coming out. So let's leverage that. Uh, we have things like MEQTT, DNP3, FTP on the cloud side, right? And they have more protocols. We're developing new things every year. We're adding new protocols to that platform. We want to be as capable as any other manufacturer out there. And we want to communicate to any system, right? Finally, you all may have heard about it, OPC way. That's a big topic. We are not behind it. We support the latest implementation of OPC way. We are part of the OPC way organization and we are connected to this topic. So PLC Next controllers are OPC way devices out of the box. Okay, you turn it on, you have a OPC way check mark box and you're done okay so we on top of that finally you know 
I was talking about Linux and things you can do in Linux. Man, you can do so much. It, it's so open that, that it's impossible even to tell you right now how much you can do. Those are just some of the examples that I like myself and things that we've done it. You know, things like Docker, that's, that's so powerful. Uh, Node-RED, MySQL, you know, JavaScript, Python, Node.js, PHP, right? All that can be done with the Linux access. Finally, you know, we always need to address that topic, right? Because I've been thinking open as, open as, open as, it's open. You can access the Linux, you can do whatever you want. But then how about the security? How about cybersecurity? How safe is this device? Uh, you know, if you can go into the Linux side and tweak it and change it, aren't you creating problems? Well, yes, you could be creating problems, but thinking of that, we developed a firewall system that comes with the device, no cost added, uh, it's embedded, and it is according to IEC 62443. For those not familiar with that, please go look it up. Uh, it's a very cool IEC standard. It means that we are uh, industrial automation, cybersecurity enabled manufacturer and device. Okay, so as a manufacturer, we are certified to do cybersecurity. And this device is cybersecurity enabled out of the box. So it comes with a firewall. You can turn it on, turn it off. You can apply protection and blocks to specific communication ports, protocols. You only can, you, you can mark uh, on and off to the protocols that you want to let it pass, the protocols that you don't want to let it pass. So the device is safe to connect to the web. Uh, you know, you don't hear a manufacturer telling you every day, hey, you can connect this PLC to the internet. Well, I bet a lot of manufacturers are going to tell you, please don't do that. Uh, we tell you the other way. Yes, this PLC can be connected to the internet. No problem. Okay, it's safe. Uh, finally, you know, the clouds, um, we have a lot of clouds that we already support, all those that you see on the screen. And we're working towards supporting more and more clouds. And of course, because the device is safe, any cloud that develops for Linux can be supported. Uh, I have a quick video over here that I wanna play to you guys. Uh, is, it's basically me <laughs> presenting one of my demos and I show you how easy and quick I can get a data point from my CPU to Proof Cloud. Okay, it's just like a minute and a half long. Uh, if you guys can watch, I'll be right back with you. Hello, this is Yuri Chamarelli with Phoenix Contact USA. And today I like to share a little bit of about PLC Next technology and demonstrate some of its IIoT capability. This demo illustrates how PLC Next can seamlessly connect to cloud services. In this case, we will be focusing We will be focusing on the Phoenix Contact Cloud Service, Profi Cloud. Let's take a closer look. Here on the top, you can see the PLC Next AXCF2152 CPU, some I.O. and our web panel WP4000. The CPU is not just controlling the sensors and the motor, it's also sending data to the cloud using our TC router 4G modem. But how does it do that? Getting data to the proof cloud is as easy as checking a box. Once you have your program, ready to go in PLC Next Engineer. All you have to do is to check the Proof Cloud box. Now, your data is ready to go and you can navigate to Proof Cloud and start creating your dashboard. Proof Cloud is an ever evolving platform and new features are released every quarter. 
Now you can visualize, track, and monitor your data in real time with a state-of-the-art comprehensive screens. It's a quick and easy way to get your data to the cloud. It's open, IIoT ready, and revolutionary. It's PLC Next. For more information, visit www.phoenixcontact.com slash open. Well, so that was a little bit of Proof Cloud. Uh, it, it's in fact really easy. Of course, I'm going really fast on the video and I know what I'm doing, but uh, it, it, we have counted and you can get data from the PLC to Proof Cloud with close to 30 to 25 clicks, depending on what kind of like, you know, object you want to see in the screen. If you want to see a gauge, if you want to see a historian, uh, it's from 25 to 30 clicks. Uh, so it's, it, it's pretty damn easy, I, I gotta tell you guys. So uh, if you're looking for a cloud solution, uh, reach out to us. We can give you some, some ideas and uh, we actually pretty good getting data to the cloud these days and we can definitely help you out uh, if that's what your project need. So uh, I, I just have a few more slides over here and then we're gonna open for questions, right? So uh, we have we have pretty much uh, four places that I usually tell people to go check after this presentation if you're looking for IoT and, and, and you know PLC to cloud. And Zach is pasting the links right now on the on the on the chat. So check it out. So we have the PLC Next community, which is basically a place where you go, you ask questions, and our specialists uh, we are gonna answer you. Uh, we have a Amazon guide, right? How to get data to AWS. We have a how to get data to Azure uh, and we have the proof cloud. So I'm giving you pretty much three options on how you can get data from your PLC to the cloud. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, those guides and this technology is kind of ever changing and ever getting easier and better. So if you need anything, please don't hesitate reach out to us, uh, find you Phoenix uh, representative and reach out to us and we are gonna help you out, okay? Finally, uh, I, I think I'm about done. This is, you know, I've been talking about PLC Next technology and, and IO and cloud and all these amazing things, but I didn't show you where you deploy all those amazing things. So those are the CPUs, that's where you deploy your project, this is the Linux CPU, the Linux operating system based CPU and controller. And you can see, look at them. They look like controllers, right? They are controllers. They are rugged. They have uh, temperature specs of controllers. They have vibration specs of controllers. Uh, they have UL, UL C1, D2, has lock. And uh, they are real automation appliances okay so we have four options today uh the 1152 on the on the left is your starter plc if you if you will it's would be the the most cost effective option and uh it has you know less processing than all the others but it's a good start so if you're looking at starting and trying it is, it is a good option and it is a scalable, okay? So whatever you create on, you know, the smallest CPU we sell and you want to scale that up, that program, that development is deployable on any of the other CPUs because it is the same programming, it is the same operating system and the same processor architecture. So everything is deployable throughout. Okay, you can scale down or you can scale up, right? So I think with that, I open for questions. And uh, if you have anything on the Q&A, or if you guys yeah, want to ask right now, just go to the Q&A and we're going to be answering them. Yeah, I, I have a few questions for you already, uh, Yuri. So uh, you had on the screen Linux and PLC Next together when you were showing the blocks. 
Um, does that mean that they have to work together in tandem? Like you, you can't do one without the other? Uh, or is it an either or type application? Great question. Uh, yes, you do not. The, the answer is no, you do not have to work with them together. Uh, they work together, but they can also work separately. So the Linux OS is independent of PLC Next technology. So you could use this CPU as a Linux box, okay? If you only want a Linux and you want that Linux to run in an environment, in an industrial environment, this could be your device, okay? Think of an industrial Raspberry Pi, okay? Let's say you know Raspberry Pi, you have a Raspberry Pi application and you wanna like industrialize that Raspberry Pi. This is your device. It's an industrial Raspberry Pi. It's better than Pi, right? Okay, there's a, another one here, Yuri. Um, how is that connection made behind the scenes to PLC Next Engineer and Linux? Is that something that needs to be made by the user? Is, is that connection already made on, uh, I think they're trying to ask, can you develop on Linux? Is there an easy way to get it to PLC Next Engineer? I believe is the, the gist of this question. Yeah, so that connection between PLC Next and Linux uh, can be programmed in a few ways. We, we have pre-canned, uh, a few ways you can do that. Uh, we use web APIs, okay, uh, which is a very easy way. Uh, and for real-time communications in between Linux and PLC Next technology, the, the PLC runtime, we use something called the memory map, which is C++ based, therefore as reliable, as fast as real-time. Uh, so that's how we do it. And if you need more info on that, we can provide in the PLC Next community too. Okay, there's, a, there's another one here. I think I can actually answer this one, Yuri. It says, um, in, in the blocks example, you were showing the cloud connectivity happening on Linux. Does this mean that we need to be a Linux user to get to the cloud? So the answer to that is no, you don't have to be a Linux user to get to the cloud. The Linux part enables the cloud connection and it is the hooks we use to get to each cloud connection. Um, there are now uh, function blocks that you can use to get to the cloud through PLC Next Engineer. And in a few months, we'll have an even easier way for you to get to the cloud without the need to know any programming or Linux at all, uh, a really web-based platform for that. Uh, so just a little teaser for anybody out there that's looking for an easy way to get to the cloud. There will be an announcement coming uh, right before mid-year. Um, uh, Yuri, here's a question. Is there a way to get started with this? Is, do you guys sell a kit? Yes, yes. And I can bring that up on the screen. I think it's a, that's an awesome question. Uh, we have a starter kit, uh, which is available and you can ask uh, your Phoenix, uh, contact there you go someone already pop over here there you go this is the poc nexus starter kit uh and it comes already with some io analogs and digitals and you have a little analog dial that you can play from zero to 10 volts over here on the left side on the right side and uh you also have push buttons right here and uh, it features the the Exaline Smart Elements, which is a awesome I/O system uh, that you guys have to check it out. Uh, it's really cool. Uh, so that that is a really nice way to start. This is the part number right here. Uh, please check it out with your uh, Phoenix Contact distributor uh, for the pricing, and uh, we have them in stock right now available. Okay, one final question here, Yuri, is what is the cost of the programming software? So I believe they're talking about PLC Next Engineer. Uh, I can answer that question. There is no cost, it's a free download. 
Um, there are additional resources you can get on PLC Next Engineer. Uh, and Yuri seems to be typing it in the, to the, the web interface right now. Uh, so it's just a free download. You go to our website, you can download the, the latest version of it. It's free to use. Uh, there are certain function blocks that uh, are a pay to add. So for example, safety, adding safety to the system comes with a license requirement. And then specific um, PLC Next store applications would have a cost associated with them. Uh, I can't tell you specifically which ones there are, but if you go to the store, it, it tells you which ones are paid apps and which ones aren't. Uh, but most libraries, uh, for example, are not paid. Uh, so uh, th that was the end of the questions that we had. Uh, Yuri, did you have any closing comments you wanted to say? I do, and we have, it looks like we have one more question. Uh, and I can't, I can't answer that. Uh, so the question is, how are the engineering tools for this BLC uh, are installed or running, running internet? So basically, I think the question is, how do we install it? And how do you run this in the internet? And uh, the answer is, the installation for the tools is the one I was showing on the screen right now. You just come over here and you download the software, OK? Uh, and to run that in the internet, this PLC needs to be connected to your internet provider uh, directly. So if you have a router home, or if you have a 4G modem, something like that, you just connect to the PLC using the ethernet cable, uh, and then boom, you're ready to go. You just can start downloading packages and using the guides and things that we provide. So that's, I hope that answers the question. I'll, I'll piggyback on that, Yuri, and say that there's also secure VPN connections available if you're if you're concerned about that or your IT is concerned. Uh, the se secure um, VPN is is available for this platform. So I, I just wanted to thank CSIA for hosting us today. Uh, I, I hope everybody got something good out of this presentation. Thank you very much, Yuri, for going uh, deep into PLC Next technology. And Jose, thank you very much for having us on today. We really appreciate it. And hopefully um, everybody on, on the presentation also got something good out of it. All right, thank you very much. One second, please. Um, let me share my screen with you. All right, finally, we have it. So on behalf of CSA, I would like to thank Yuri and Zach for this informative discussion. I'd also like to thank Phoenix Contact for sponsoring this event. Finally, thank you all who attended this event today. We hope you found this virtual event informational. We'd also like to remind you that a recording will be available for viewing within 30 days of this event. Please visit the CSA website to view this recording or a past webinar you may have missed. Finally, be sure to bookmark the CSIA events calendar so you don't miss any upcoming events like the one I am posting right here. If you want to contact us at CSIA, I'm Jose Rivera, and this is my contact information. You can also reach Lisa Richter, who is the industry director and uh, we gladly establish a conversation with you regarding sponsorship or membership. So without any further ado, thank you all and have a great day.